the uh, modern era assumed that there would be casualties of 50% or more of the American population in the event of war. So they are assuming that 50% of the people listening to this broadcast will be killed. That's just part of their war, war planning oh, yeah. calculus. Yeah. Well, I, so I, they're, I, not, they're not intending to protect you whatsoever. They're assuming that if they go to war and it's nu shooting nuclear war, that half of everyone listening to this will be killed, and and the deaths in many cases will be excruciatingly agonizing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, so I, there's not any pretense of protecting you. On the contrary. Well, no, I can see where you're coming from. It's 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 the whole thing. But the government, I haven't trusted the government since I was 12, uh, which is a sad thing. Uh, and I have watched over the years where they have in, intentionally provoke people to get stuff going on. But, you know, I, I've also learned, too, like for us, for all, you know, I'll use Katrina as an example, we knew what was coming. Uh, we were very well prepared for it. Our house was very well prepared for it. And, and as that, all the radio listeners of this show knows, I was broadcasting the Wednesday after Katrina live in New yeah. Orleans. Yeah. Um, but that is because I was prepared. This is where people don't understand, and I tell everybody the same thing on a regular basis. Don't rely on anyone but yourself. We, we own three different generators. We have all kinds. Of course, we own a construction company. We own all kind of other equipment. I have guns, pistols, shotguns, rifles, um, most of which will never even come out of storage unless needed, but it's all there. Yeah. It's all in place in case something happens. Yeah. Not just this, though. Yeah. I'll give you all some other little tidbits. I'm not going to tell you where these places are, but me and my partner and my wife and a few other friends have gone around the U.S. looking for specific places where that they may have generators and ACs and stuff put together. I'll tell you all a little secret that I shouldn't tell you all. Cell phone towers after a war will be a great thing because they have built-in generators with both uh, uh, um, um, gas fuel, I mean diesel fuel, petroleum, I mean um, like uh, butane, and solar power. Yeah. So, plus they're air conditioned. So, and these are little contained places all over the United States. So these are other places to gather resources and stuff, but there's a lot of other places besides that. And I tell Americans, make yourself familiar with this because if something does go down on a major scale, you're going to need to know where these places are if you're going to plan on surviving because you know, you're not going to be able to get fuel places. You're not going to be able to get food places. Yeah. Um, and, and see, we even know where they stockpile like military food and stuff like that and, mm -hmm. and, and warehouses where all this stuff is. This is all stuff that we've taken our time to learn where they keep this stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and I, like I swear, I hope I never need it in my lifetime, but if I do, uh, you know, people used to pick on me about Katrina. They said, man, y'all are living good. Y'all are living high there. And we were, but we yeah. were prepared yeah. for it. Well, and that's an important point. Um, it's clear to me that with a lot of these uh, secret underground facility, facilities, the intent is, uh, first of all, for the what would you say, those who call or fancy themselves to be the ruling elite, the, the pawns, puppets, and minions of the powers that be, uh, are preparing for their own survival in the event of any type of catastrophe, catastrophe whether man-made, natural, from off the planet, um, it doesn't matter. And they are looking out for their own interests, by the way, using your money, which oh, is yeah. taken from you by force uh, through taxation, wh taxation uh, whether you're aware of it or not, whether you agree with it or not, whether you like it or not, they are siphoning money right out of your pocket and have been your entire life from cradle to grave in a hundred different ways. And they're using your resources to prepare for their own safe keep keeping in, in time of trouble, and they will not let you into these underground facilities. Um, oh, no, then I did. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, what Richard just said is a very valid thing. If you don't know someone, and I mean someone way, way, way up the ladder, you're on your own. Plan. You're on your own, and they will go into facilities which will be heavily guarded. Most of them are, are secret anyway, so they're hard to find. Yep. And even if you know where one is, um, you're not getting in unless it's a, entry is by invitation only. only. And you will not get in, even if you would breach the outer defenses. They will, and I promise you this, have armed guards who will take care of you in short order. Oh, yeah, and not even hesitate either, ladies. No, they'll just blow your head off. It'll, be, it'll all be over in a tenth of a second. Um, so, but the fact is, there are a lot of these facilities. Um, the, 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 the largest ones are literally 
um, small towns underground. They are technologically very sophisticated. They're very deep. They're very hard to get into. Um, they're very well supplied um, and maintained. And my research suggests there are a lot of them, oh, yeah, not there. only for the military but for other agencies and organizations as well. Um, and that's that's all I can tell you now in my, my, my latest book, which will be out soon in another month or two, um, I discuss some of the best known, best known and largest of these in the United States. In the United States, my work focuses on North America because this is where I live. I've spent most of my life here, so it's it's most feasible for me to discover information about what happens here. But it doesn't mean that there are not similar facilities in other countries all over the world because there are. Oh yeah, um, right. not only in America but in Russia, China. Switzerland, Norway, um, Great Britain, Australia, Saudi Arabia, Israel. I mean, they're all over the place. Yep. Well, on that note, we've got to take a break, ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to stop right here. It's a good cutoff point. Uh, we'll be back in about eight or nine minutes, ladies and gentlemen, so I want you all to please stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome to UFO Undercover with your host, Joe Montaldo. Welcome back, everyone, to UFO Undercover. Today's guest is Richard Saunders. We're discussing underground bases and a few other things along that. You know, I say this a lot, but it's a shame y'all can't hear the conversations at the breaks. Uh, there's so much information that gets discussed on breaks that we'll never <laughs> talk about on the air. And as a matter of fact, I was talking with Stan Freeman about that a while back. We were talking about some stuff he had run across. And, uh, but some things, guys, you know, there's always going to be some secrets in ufology, but uh, as far as we, we try not to keep everything secret, we try to give you all as much as possible. But, you know, some things, you, when you're doing the kind of research that I personally am, there's a reason why we keep some stuff a secret, because ever since I released some of the abduction criteria two years ago, our our contact cases have tripled. The problem is that so have our fraud cases. <laughs> it's made my life a little bit tougher. But, Richard, welcome back, man. Uh, Thank you, Joe. Um, now, where were we? I lost my whole train of thought here. Well, why don't we just start with uh, what happened in the immediate World War II period and come back and look at that some more, because it's so important for us right down to the present day. Who, who was that? Was Because oh, I'm glad you brought that up. I remember it, uh, was, it was either one of your books or one of your lectures or somewhere. You had those pictures of that uh, underground German facility, that, that tram system. Um, when what? Now I've gone lost that, that was... Well, that was in the 1930s, and, and that was what Hermann Kemper okay, okay. Uh, was talking about. And in fact, I go into that in my most recent book, which, which, which will be out in several weeks. Because that's fascinating. It is fascinating, and at the same time, you have to understand, uh, within the Third Reich, there was an organization called uh, the Tote Organization, T-O-D-T, which was named after Fritz Tote. Fritz Tote was the man... Uh, who developed the German Autobahn uh, system of of inter which was a German analog to to our interstate highway system, and our interstate highway system was really modeled after the German Autobahn. However, Fritz Tote built the German Autobahn back in the in the 1930s. He was a genius, a civil engineer, and he was really an engineering genius. Adolf Hitler tapped Fritz Tote to create the Tote organization which for the German military uh, system did, to, did, did much the same type of work that the Army Corps of Engineers and the CBs do for the Army and the Navy in our system. In other words, they worked very closely with the German military, building facilities that they needed, docks, um, missile uh, bases, underground tunnels and trains and things of this kind. Um, now, what the TOTE organization did was to make a series of underground uh, bases and facilities, which, and, which in some cases were very elaborate, uh, large, and sophisticated. And this was back in the 1930s and 1940s already. Um, they are in, in, in what is now Poland, but at that time would have been in eastern Germany, um, they made a, a, a sprawling um, 